Okay, everybody, we have senior Amir Sims. Please go ahead with questions. Hey, Amir, it's Trevor Gross from CUTigers.com. Um, how, how emotional do you think you'll be uh, before you take the court for a senior day tomorrow? Potentially your last game in Little John. Um, definitely very emotional. You know, I'm not really an emotional person, but uh, I just take a small time to reflect on my time here and uh, just everything that, you know, we've accomplished as a program in my four years. It'll definitely make me a little teary out, but I don't think, you know, uh, I'll be that emotional. I kind of was the first night, first game that we had here. I think it was against South Carolina State. I had a little moment to myself, but I don't think I'll be really emotional, but I'll definitely take some time to sit back and reflect on my time here in my four years. Hey, you have the option of from your, you know, growth as a player to your, Twitter posts making fun of John Newman to this being a great year in your last season. It's been an incredible ride. What's your fondest memories of your time at Clemson? Um, definitely freshman year, just that group was very special and probably one of the best groups I've ever been a part of, you know, uh, from an athletic standpoint and just, you know, going to Spain and just bonding with each other and getting really close. And then that year just being what it was, was just something I won't forget for sure. Um, definitely the UNC win. That's probably would be number one. But uh, honestly, I'll definitely take my junior year the most because that taught me the most lessons about being a leader and uh, just the experience of having to, you know, be in many places at one time and just, you know, being expandable and kind of doing the most that you can for your team. And um, my junior year is probably one year that I won't forget out of my collegiate career because, like I said, it just taught me a lot. You know, we've accomplished a lot, and, you know, through the, the, the big wins and the terrible losses. That was just a very uh, memorable year that I would not forget. But um, I definitely got a lot that I haven't really thought about, but I definitely do that more towards after the season. Hey, Amir, this is Will Vanderbilt with Clemson Insider. Kind of playing off of that, you talked about your growth. How much of that was Coach Brownell, and, and, and what's that relationship been like? Well, um, he plays a huge part. You know, we've had many conversations where he's pulled me aside uh, after practice or before practice and just kind of spoke for like 10 to 15 minutes about what I want to accomplish, the, the progress I've made and what I can improve on, continuously improve on. And I definitely think he's played a huge role in that and just making sure I keep that confidence and, you know, keep that same work ethic that I came in with and just, you know, always stay hungry and want to be a better person and a better player and just, you know, having that hunger to keep growing. But uh, he's definitely played a huge part in that for sure. Amir, this is David Teal with the Times-Dispatch in Richmond. You mentioned earlier that you're not necessarily an emotional person but what were your emotions last year being on the court when the ACC tournament was canceled and how eager are you guys to get back on that court next week um I was kind of in shock kind of just caught up in the moment not really sure what to expect or what was going to happen next you know none of us knew that the world was going to change that day but um I think at that very moment I was very kind of just like in a twister and just just like the person next to me trying to figure out what was going to be the next move and just in shock and kind of just in that moment, just experiencing just like everyone else. But we're definitely eager to get back. You know, we have some pretty good momentum going into that game. And, you know, we haven't really thought too much about the tournament right now. We're just focusing on pit tomorrow. But we're definitely eager to get back out there and play. And, you know, tournament time is always the best, whether it's a conference or the big dance. So we're definitely excited to get out there and play for sure. But right now we're just focusing on pit. Could you ever have imagined what the last year has been like? Uh, honestly, no. I've been getting a lot of texts talking about, I think it's been like a year or so since like uh, that day has uh, happened. But um, it's definitely been a, a whirlwind of a year, I think. You know, just life period. And from an athletic standpoint, it's definitely been challenging, you know, having games postponed or canceled. And, you know, a lot of people's uh, careers being affected by that. But I haven't really thought too much about it. You know, I just take every day for what it's worth and one day at a time. Hey, Amir, do you, how often do you, do you think back to um, that moment when you found out you're on the court and everything got canceled? And are you kind of using that as, as motivation as you look uh, go forward this year? Uh, honestly, this semester alone, I probably thought about it every other day, just thinking like, man, like, what if that would happen again? You know, I was talking to uh, JB the other day and we are like, man, what if we get there and the same thing will happen? Like, that would be a bummer, you know, because we remember what it felt like, you know, just watching Tevin and Curran and Paul 
just be really emotional and kind of caught up in the moment with uh, tears and stuff like that. And I would hate for that to happen to me and JB and Clyde as well. So, you know, it's kind of funny you ask that because, you know, like I said, me and JB were just talking about that, but um, pretty often this semester at least. Amir, uh, Larry Williams with TigerIllustrated.com. Um, given the distinct and kind of unique nature of Syracuse's uh, zone defense, do you think your struggles uh, offensively uh, inside the three-point line, are those, is that something where you just sort of flush it and throw away the film just given the, the, the unique nature of that particular challenge, or is it something you can actually um, sort of work on heading into tomorrow's game, like address it specifically? Uh, honestly speaking, a game like Syracuse, you got to watch and learn. You should watch and learn from every game, whether you perform good or bad. But, you know, when you play a team like Syracuse with their own orthodox zone, you know, there's definitely sweet spots. And, you know, we played them the first time. I found those sweet spots and I was hitting those shots, you know, all night. But, you know, um, that's definitely a game you don't want to just flush away because it's an opportunity to learn and progress from. But, um, I think it was more so just, you know, learning the spots and getting them and finding them and just finishing around the rim. It was nothing that they really did. It was just like tough spots that we were kind of putting ourselves in. We wasn't being aggressive. And, you know, you, that's something you watch from and you learn from film. So it's definitely not a game you want to just flush away, but uh, you can always learn from it as well. I think uh, Coach mentioned the fact that nobody was in the building might have had an effect on y'all's energy it, it, can you reflect on that? Was that uh, a factor looking back? Um, not necessarily. You know, you never tend to want to let the crowd kind of dictate how you perform. And uh, it definitely gets boosted at times. But uh, I don't think them not having any fans, you know, was an issue because we played at places where there wasn't any fans. But um, some might argue that it did. But me personally, I don't think it had any effect on how we played. We just didn't come in aggressive and set the tone early with our team. Hey, Amir, this is uh, Todd Shaughnessy in uh, Greenville and Spartanburg. Uh, you're fluent, kind of fluent in sign language, right? Yeah, a little bit. Just How did you get into life. that? Um, honestly, my teammate, my freshman year, Malik William, he was taking a class at the time, and he used to come home talking about it. And after a while, you know, I needed a language for my major for sure. So just talking to Malik, he just, you know, spoken into me and just, you know, sparked my interest level in I thought it was pretty challenging, just a fun way to learn a new language. And it was kind of fun for us at the time as a little inside joke to whenever coach would like make us mad or something, we would sign something for each other. <laughs> but after a while, I just kind of really bought into it. So when you watch the governor give uh, like COVID speeches, you're watching the sign guy. Uh, I actually saw that when we were at uh, Syracuse, they was doing that on TV. And um, I haven't taken it in almost a year, but I was definitely trying to dial in and focus on what the lady was saying. It's, it's challenging because they sound a lot faster, but I picked up on it a little bit. What do you like about that? Sound language is just, it's definitely fun. You know, being able to talk without using your mouth and just using straight hand gestures. And it's almost like act, acting it out in a sense. So it's kind of a fun way to learn, a fun way to express yourself without using your words. Any more questions for Amir? Okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Mayor.